few years ago, the Arthritis Society realized that arthritis, as well as being the most common chronic disease in Canada, was quickly becoming the leading cause of disability as well. So we commissioned a survey with Leger Marketing called Fit for Work that polled 1,057 Canadians living with arthritis. The survey showed that most people want to work, but when they're confronted with arthritis, there are some challenges. So the Arthritis Society has introduced the Joint Matters at Work initiative. This initiative has four main objectives. Awareness, education, resources and information that are available to, uh, to people, and helping to support a creative culture so that uh, people in the workplace can, can feel supported and can continue to work as long as possible. So here's a brief outline about what we're going to talk about today. First, a few facts about arthritis. What it is, what happens to our joints when we have it, that sort of thing. The two main types of arthritis, osteoarthritis and inflammatory arthritis. Next, a little bit about why we get the disease, how it's diagnosed, and recognizing early signs of the disease. We'll talk about some of the challenges at the, market, at the workplace and the five simple steps to self-management. And then a little bit about the uh, tools and resources available at the Arthritis Society. So arthritis is a chronic disease. Once you get it, you're likely to have it for life. However, you can live a full and complete life if you take control and manage your disease. So it should not be considered a disease of old age. It's a common misconception. It can strike anyone at any age, from toddlers right through to your great-grandparents. Most common chronic disease in Canada, more than 4.6 million Canadians aged 15 years and older report having arthritis. This means one in six adult Canadians live with the disease. By 2036, it's estimated that 7.5 million, or one in five Canadians, will live with arthritis. So about 24,000 Canadian children aged 18 and under live with some form of arthritis. That's, that's about three out of every 1,000 kids. Two-thirds of people affected by arthritis are women. And although arthritis is often perceived as a condition of the elderly, 56% of Canadians with arthritis are under 65 years of age. So arthritis means inflammation of a joint. So this can cause pain, stiffness, occasional swelling, difficulty moving that joint, and over time can cause irreversible joint damage. So arthritis uh, is an umbrella term of over 100 different disorders that, that uh, affect the joints and the structures that surround them, such as ligaments, tendons, and muscles. So let's start by looking at a healthy joint and then move on to see how the different types of arthritis can impact it. Although arthritis affects mainly the joint, it also has an impact on the surrounding tissues. So osteoarthritis, the most common form of arthritis, involves both cartilage and bone. Whereas rheumatoid arthritis, which is a form of inflammatory arthritis, first involves the synovial membrane and fluid and eventually affects the cartilage and the bone. So other musculoskeletal conditions like tendonitis involve the tendons and the muscles. So to simplify the 100 different types of arthritis, uh, they can be divided into two main categories. You have osteoarthritis and you have inflammatory arthritis. So uh, with inflammatory arthritis, the most common types are rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and ankylosing spondylitis. So let's start with osteoarthritis, often known as the wear and tear arthritis. It usually progresses slowly over a period of months to years before you actually feel any symptoms of it. This is because the cartilage of the joint is gradually eroding over, the, over time. The exception would be if it was caused by an injury or some sort of a trauma to the joint, which could accelerate the breakdown of that cartilage. Uh, in osteoarthritis, pain has a gradual onset, again, unless it comes from an injury. It's usually worse after you use that joint and tends to get better when you rest, when you rest the joint. Stiffness may occur in the joint after you rest it or when you wake up in the morning, but is usually pretty short-lived unless you're in a flare. So a flare is a period of heightened symptoms uh, and could be caused by something like a piece of cartilage that's broken off and has irritated the joint capsule. Osteoarthritis can result in a decreased range of motion. Uh, as a result of stiffness and can cause problems with you moving the joints in your body. Uh, functional difficulties can occur as well as a result of the pain and the stiffness. You might find it harder to do your everyday tasks at home or at work. And uh, changes, changes to the cartilage can usually be seen uh, in x-rays by your doctor. Osteoarthritis normally affects the ends of the fingers, the neck, the lower back, the knees, and the hips. If we look at the slide, notice the space between the two bones. Cartilage is beginning to wear away, and bone is thickening in those places. The picture of the joint on the right here shows the narrowing of that joint space as the cartilage wear wears away and the bones start to rub together. So pieces of cartilage have broken off and are floating around in the synovial fluid, which causes inflammation in that joint. This bone-on-bone -bone contact can cause pain, and the joint is also now out of alignment, which means that the joint is unstable. 
So these can cause changes to the, uh, the, the movement dynamics of the joint, which can lead to a loss of range of motion and decreased function. Now we're going to speak about the second category of arthritis, inflammatory arthritis. It's much less common, affecting about 1 in 50 people. There are many types of inflammatory arthritis, but rheumatoid arthritis is the most common. Others you may have heard of, heard of are psoriatic arthritis, lupus, or ankylosing spondylitis, just to name a few. These inflammatory types of arthritis usually start over a period of weeks to months, progressing to other joints over time. Sometimes you feel the fatigue, the fatigue first, then you feel the pain. Inflammatory arthritis is an autoimmune disease where the immune system attacks healthy joints. So it causes inflammation in the joint and in other areas of the body as well. So some symptoms can include extreme fatigue, this is very common with people who live with inflammatory arthritis because it's a systemic condition involving inflammation throughout the whole body. A flu-like fatigue can be felt. Systemic means it affects the whole body, not just localized areas. Unusual stiffness, which is usually worse in the morning, so after long periods of rest, but can also be with you, during, uh, you know, throughout your day. Uh, unusual pain. So people should be aware if there's a new pain that appears in their hands or in their feet, but eventually can be felt in, in in any or all joints in the body. Joints that are affected are prone to swelling, so inflammation will cause swelling of the joints. Uh, people will experience tenderness to the joint. There the joint might be warm, so a little bit of heat is generated by that inflammation as well. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis, the most common type of inflammatory arthritis, typically affects the small joints of the hands and the feet, the wrist, the elbows, the shoulder, the neck, uh, the knees and hips in a symmetrical pattern, meaning it affects the same joint on both sides of the body. So what we see here is a healthy joint on the left-hand side. The joint on the right has an inflamed synovial membrane, causing an increase in the synovial fluid. This sw swelling feels spongy. It's not, a hard, uh, it's not a hard thing if you were to touch it with your hands. It feels very spongy. It causes pain and weakness, and if it's not treated, it will cause damage to the bone and the cartilage. So this constant inflammation erodes the soft tissues in the joint. Uh, this can cause alignment problems. It can cause deformity of the joint area. So now that I've told you a little bit about the two different types of arthritis, we're going to compare the types, and we're going to talk about the risk factors. So osteoarthritis. It's important to realize that there are two types of osteoarthritis. There's primary and secondary. So primary occurs when there's no obvious reason. So there was no trauma. There was no accident. Uh, perhaps there's an inherited disposition towards it, genetically or through body structure. Uh, through, though osteoarthritis could have started earlier, most people begin to notice symptoms as they get older, in their 40s and into their 50s. Secondary osteoarthritis occurs when there's a likely cause. So the most common cause of secondary arthritis is a, is a prior injury or an accident to the joint or cartilage and affected the way the joint moved. So the joint moved differently, therefore it caused a quicker deterioration of the cartilage. So there, there are some other risk factors, but those are the two primaries. Uh, inflammatory arthritis is likely caused by a combination of internal and external factors, so genetic factors and environmental factors. We can't tell which is, which is most important yet, but examples of environmental triggers that, that could cause inflammatory arthritis include trauma, infections, and smoking. So early warning signs of arthritis. So if we talk about some of the things that can sort of give us an idea that, that we might uh, be developing arthritis are joint pain and stiffness, so we, we spoke about that, and occasional swelling of the joints, so from time to time, certain joint might become inflamed and become uh, swollen. Uh, some difficulties moving that joint, and any pain that interferes with your work or your daily life. Sometimes arthritis causes pain and stiffness in the surrounding muscles as well. So for example, a pain in the upper thigh might cause, uh, might be a sign of arthritis in your hip. A muscle pain lasting more than six weeks should definitely be discussed with your doctor. Early diagnosis of arthritis by a physician is essential. Early treatment is key to stopping irreversible joint damage. For osteoarthritis, it's important to discuss any symptoms you have so you can learn how to manage them and possibly slow the progression of the disease. When it comes to inflammatory arthritis, there are now very, very effective medications that can keep the disease under control and possibly even send it into remission. So, but without treatment, inflammatory arthritis can very quickly result in severe joint damage. So it's imperative individuals find out what type of arthritis they have as there are different kinds of treatment for each type. So I've been living with ankylosing spondylitis for 19 years now, since I was 19 years old. Uh, I'm very lucky. I respond well to medications and found treatments that work for me. Uh, on top of the medications, I also do my best to eat well, to exercise regularly. Um, all these things put together and, and managing my own disease has allowed me to continue to work uh, full time 
in a full-time job. I have a fairly demanding job. Uh, it's a managerial position, and I'm f there are a lot of demands on my time. And so I do little things to try and make it easier to, to, to manage the disease and working at the same time, such as when I take a break, I like to go for a walk. Just getting my body moving really helps me. Uh, it, it, uh, it, it helps me clear my mind, but it also it sort of gets my, my joints moving, and it helps me to feel better. I also made the personal choice to tell my employer about my disease. So, as I say, it's a personal choice. Not everybody feels comfortable with that. Not everyone uh, necessarily has a great relationship with the human resources or with even with their boss. It's, it's really something that you have to decide for yourself. Uh, I had a good experience with it. Uh, my employer understood. And they, uh, they sort of allowed some concessions and a few changes in my, my work environment so that I could continue to work and continue to be a productive member of society, which, uh, of society uh, to the company, which is what I wanted to do. So I, uh, things, for example, as, as uh, being able to work from home on days when I'm really not feeling uh, up to going into the office, that's, that's one option. Uh, they provided me with a cell phone so that I can be reached even if I'm not in the office. They, uh, th in the meetings, they understand that sometimes I have to get up and stand and stretch. If it's a long meeting, I can't sit for an hour straight. It's just very uncomfortable for me. And so people understand and they're very supportive of me, and maybe a little tolerant too if I lose a little patience <laughs> from time to time. Um, uh, dealing with the fatigue that comes along with this is also a big challenge, and trying to manage a home life and a work life can be very difficult when living with an inflammatory condition or any sort of chronic pain. Um, so having people around you who understand that, it makes a big difference. So now I'd like to tell you a little bit more about the resources available through the Arthritis Society's website, which is www.arthritis.ca. We, uh, we have a special page there dedicated to joint matters at work. Uh, there's, a, there's a video there which shows some simple stretches you can do anytime, even at your desk, and can help keep pain and stiffness from impacting your work day. So the video is about eight minutes long. Uh, there's a link to other resources, such as the top 10 exercises you can do, a uh, series of podcasts and information on physical activity and nutrition when living with arthritis. And uh, there's also some more information about arthritis in the workplace. There's some great checklists designed uh, uh, specifically for joint matters at work to help you deal with arthritis in the workplace. It's, a, it's an excellent guide for employers and employees and even healthcare providers. Then there's some links to some online self-management courses like the chronic pain management course and some others along that nature. Uh, so I'd urge any of you who are dealing with arthritis or think they may have early signs of the disease or even know somebody who's living with the disease to visit our website and look up these resources. The Arthritis Society is Canada's principal health charity uh, to over 4.6 million Canadians that are living with the disease. Since it was founded in 1948, the Society has been the largest non-government funder of arth arthritis research in Canada, investing nearly $190 million uh, in project, projects that have led to breakthroughs in diagnosis, treatment, and care of people living with the disease. This year, the Society committed $4.2 million to research. So please share your feedback with us uh, about the presentation. Uh, the, take a few moments to fill out the workshop evaluation form. This is really helpful for us to continue to evolve the program. Uh, if you're interested in hearing more about the Arthritis Society and what they're doing, you can fill in the contact form. And you can select the kind of information that you're interested in receiving. Our e-newsletter is also a great way to stay informed about new developments in research and any new information that, that might become available on the Arthritis Society's uh, website. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. So we hope uh, you found the presentation informative helpful, interesting, and uh, please stay connected.